The winter season of the Skaldaskar is far from over as Dauntless releases their newest content update with patch 1.5.3, Frost Escalations. This is one of the team's biggest updates in a while, and you can definitely tell that there has been a lot of love poured into it from behind the scenes. From new mechanics to awesome cosmetics, here's our preview and six things that you can look forward to with this new content drop. Number 1. New Frostbite Mechanics Frost Escalations bring a new challenge for Slayers in the form of Frostbite, a new condition unique to this icy area that you'll have to maintain if you and your team want to make it out of the frozen wasteland alive. As Slayers move through the battlefield, you'll notice a new bar with some dangling icicles that you can use to determine your character's current Frostbite levels. Since we don't play one of the Scaldish, Slayers native to this part of the Frozen World, we aren't fortunate enough to benefit from their Snowblood, and have to keep a close eye on this meter if we want to survive the encounter. Your Frostbite meter will continue to accumulate at a rapid rate unless you do one of four things. Defeat the current Behemoth. Enter the warming aura of a Brazier or Cleansing Pylon. Take advantage of the active boon or use your avatar ability. Braziers are spread throughout the map as a way to keep the frostbite at bay, and for those that are quick enough to reach it first, they'll gain a nice little boost by having a chunk of their frostbite taken off. The cleansing pylons are a new item that slayers can unlock on their slayer path, and as usual, can be crafted at the enigmatic Granny Strega shop. The Queen of the Skaldaskar herself, Linnea Silver, has come to aid those slayers brave enough to battle the new frozen horrors that have overtaken her homeland. She will offer boons that require you to perform special actions in order to reduce your current frostbite level. Each boon has specific conditions, so you'll definitely need to pay attention at the beginning of the fight to learn what you need to do in order to activate them. If you get lost in the madness of the wintry fight, and your frostbite meter caps out, you'll need to rely on your teammates to bring you back down to the 75% threshold in order to move again. Number 2. Avatar Abilities and Powerful Amps At the beginning of each escalation run, there are four pillars of power that you can interact with. Each pillar will provide you with a much needed avatar ability that will help reduce frostbite for your entire party. You can choose from one of these four. The Avatar of Destruction, Avatar of Control, Avatar of Unity, and the Avatar of Subtlety. A glowing shield icon appears on your Slayer's back, denoting the Avatar ability you've chosen. So if by chance you happen to get in a group whose strong point is at communication, you can still tell what the rest of your group has chosen to go with. As a Warpike user, I see my Slayer alternating between choosing the Avatar of Destruction and the Avatar of Subtlety. Also new to the Frost Escalation is the inclusion of new amps that actually improve your Avatar abilities and further increase your team's survivability, offering up that much more customization for your Escalation runs. Number 3. Lots and lots of lore. While we all expected a ton of snow and ice, the Frost Escalation has given us even more in the way of lore for the world of Dauntless. Tons of new assets and lore details have been scattered all throughout the map, giving the run a much needed feel of being lived in and alive. There are bits and pieces of armor from the Fallen Scaldish scattered about, with watchtowers, barricades, and buildings that are most certainly remnants of the Missing Slayers. The behemoths don't even feel like they were just dropped in out of nowhere. It actually feels like we're mounting a rescue mission to push back these monsters that have devastated the Queen's homeland. These little bits and pieces give me so much hope for the future of Dauntless and its lore. For some time, it's felt like Dauntless was lacking a little bit in the way of lore and narrative for its slayers, so I'm so excited to see that the writers are leaning more into the storytelling through level design and really giving the players a story they can latch on to. Number 4. Deep Frost Behemoths and Slayer Popsicles 
There are quite a few new enemies to battle in the Frost Escalation, such as Deep Frost Scorn and the Deep Frost Nasher. One behemoth, though, that I think most slayers will be excited to see is the Frost Wolf, or, as Dr. Priyani would prefer to call it, the Deep Frost Ember Main. Lithe and quick, the Frost Wolf is a mutated form of the Ember Main, thanks to a nice blast of power from the surging frost aether of this region. You can expect a lot of bullying from this one, as it has a tendency to summon little ones that are quick to hold you down and take a chunk out of your health. No, seriously, they're, they're cute and all, but they're extremely dangerous. Number 5. Erska. Ah, Erska, the one we've been waiting for. Just take a look at this beauty. Erska's the new saber tooth like behemoth boss that's waiting deep in their cavernous den for a tasty slayer snag. She climbs up the walls of the cavern and clings to giant icicles, lashes out at you with her icy sharp tail, and knocks you across the room with the swing of one of her massive paws. Just don't forget about your frostbite. To manage your frostbite here, you'll have to keep an eye on those around you and break them out as soon as possible. There are two braziers here, but it's very easy to get overwhelmed with the constant onslaught of Erska's attacks. Number 6. A new hunt pass in cosmetics. Of course, with any update, we have new cosmetics and a new realm of ice hunt pass to look forward to. As expected, we can unlock the surprisingly beautiful hunting armor of the Skaldiskar. For those that purchase the Elite Hunt Pass, they will be able to unlock both the Frost Shaper and the Paladin of Vilmark armor sets. I absolutely love the Frost Shaper set, but there are unfortunately some slight clipping issues for those of us that favor ponytails. Regardless, it's still a beautiful set that has some really nice pieces for creating your own transmog. And that about wraps it up. Personally, my two favorite hunts so far have to be the Deep Frost Scar and the Deep Frost Ember Main. I'm definitely ready to dive into Erska's Cavern and start farming materials for the newest armor set. So what are you looking forward to the most with the 1.5.3 update? Sound off in the comments down below.